This one, I got to say, it's a, it's a tough one. We're looking at Stefan Passantino, a lawyer, and he got caught up in that whole January 6th mess. Yeah. It, honestly, what he's saying, it kind of shakes you, like, about the whole system, you know? Yeah, no, it's a... It is concerning, for sure. And it's not like Passantino is some nobody. We're talking 30 years in political law, big shot firm, even deputy White House counsel for Trump. Right, exactly. That's what makes this whole thing so, like, uh, unsettling. It's not just some, you know, partisan guy yelling into the void. Yeah. This is someone who's seen how D.C. works. The interview itself is from Tucker Carlson over a couple weeks back, and people are taking notice. One thing that jumps out right off the bat is who Passantino was representing during the January 6th stuff. Mostly junior staffers, campaign folks, yeah. kind of little guys who got caught up in the whole net. Yeah, he makes that point very clearly. Not the big names, not the folks right there at the Capitol. It so he wasn't defending, like, the violence or law breaking. His clients were mostly swept up in this huge investigation. Probably a lot of them had nothing to do with what actually went down on January 6th. And that's key, right? Because it adds this whole other layer to his accusations against Liz Cheney. She was vice chair of the January 6th committee. And this, this is where it gets really dicey. Passantino's claim is that Cheney talked directly with his client, Cassidy Hutchinson, behind his back. Like for lawyers, that's huge. Ethically, you can't do that. Oh, absolutely. You don't talk to someone represented by counsel except through their lawyer. Basic stuff. Right. It's meant to be fair. No undue influence. And you've got a Congress member doing this. That's, I, I mean, come on. Deeply concerning, yeah. But it gets worse. Pazentino says Cheney did this on purpose to make him look bad, like he was obstructing Hutchinson's testimony. Trying to discredit him as a lawyer. Right. And there's actually some stuff to back this up, too. Loudermilk, the chairman now, his investigation turned up documents. Hmm. Seems to fit with what Passantino is saying. It's like out to some spy movie. Members of Congress playing these games. I mean, it makes you wonder about the whole damn system, you know? Yeah. And then there's the media angle. Passantino claims CNN got a transcript of Hutchinson's testimony. Hmm. The one accusing him of all this. Before he did. Hmm. Blew my mind. And that's true. It's like they were working with the committee. Smear campaign, control the narrative. He even says CNN had texts that contradicted Hutchinson, but decided it wasn't newsworthy. Makes you think, what else aren't they reporting? Right. Is it about the truth mm -hmm. or just pushing an agenda? And then all those bar complaints filed against him so fast. Some from groups like the 65 Project, specifically hmm. targeting lawyers who worked with Trump. Exactly. Makes you wonder if the legal profession itself is being used for political ends. It's a thought, isn't it? Scary thought. If lawyers are scared to represent certain clients because they'll get attacked, mm -hmm. where does that leave us? Chilling effect on dissent, for sure, undermines the whole idea of justice. And then you got the destruction of evidence thing. Passantino brings up Loudermilk's findings, those tapes of witness depositions. Destroyed. They were supposed to be kept. Mm -hmm. If that's true, what was the point of any of this? Why destroy evidence if you're actually looking for the truth? It just it doesn't add up. Raises some serious questions about the motivations, yeah. Was it about January 6th or protecting themselves, their story? I think that's a question we all got to be asking. Yeah. This isn't just about Passantino. This is about institutions, the rule of law. If this kind of stuff flies, what's the point of any of it? Sobering thought. And it should worry everyone, no matter what side you're on politically. You know what gets me? This whole thing with Passantino, it feels like a pattern. Like, they're trying to scare any lawyer who'd represent Trump or anyone near him. Right. You represent the wrong person, and suddenly you're the target. Yeah. And he even brings up that 65 Project. That group, their whole deal is disbarring lawyers who worked with Trump. I yeah. mean, who thinks about that for a second? What kind of message does that send? To lawyers? Yeah. Man, it's <sighs> chilling, is what it is. If you're scared to take a case because of politics. Yeah. What's even the point of our justice system then? It's like the whole idea of due process. It's eroding right in front of us. Someone can't get a lawyer because of their beliefs. That's messed up. It's like the core of our system, right? Yeah. Both sides, equal legal help. It's all going out the window. And Passantino saying he says it's hard now to find lawyers for Trump or Republicans, <laughs> anything election related. They're too afraid. And why wouldn't they be? Look what happened to him. Bar complaints, media going crazy. 
even a criminal investigation. They're making an example out of him. Yeah, it's a clear warning. Step out of line, this is what happened. And it's not just the legal stuff, right? Passantino talks about the personal hit. Oh yeah, he gets into that. His family, the stress. Publicly called a criminal, reputation shot before he can even defend himself. Tough to hear. It's easy to get lost in the laws, the politics, mm -hmm. but these are people. In CNN, this is what gets me, they supposedly had stuff that could have cleared Passantino but didn't report it. Appalling, if true. It's like deliberate, you know, twisting the story, hurting someone on purpose. What's their role here? Supposed to be neutral, reporting facts, but it doesn't feel that way, does it? Nope. And then the big one. Yeah. The evidence. Pathentino keeps bringing up Loudermilk's findings. Those tapes, the witness stuff, gone. That's Yeah, that's bad. Procedures out the window, whole investigation suspect now. If you're really looking for the truth, why destroy anything? Unless. Unless you're hiding something. Troubling, to say the least. And it sets a precedent, right? If they can get away with this, what's next? Erosion of trust. Across the board, how can you hold anyone accountable when this is happening? And Passantino makes this point. It stuck with me. He's like, if they can do this to me, someone with money, connections. What chance does the average person have? Yeah, makes you think. Are any of us safe when they're this willing to bend the rules? It's a fundamental thing, isn't it? Due process, fair trial, those are the pillars. And when those crumble, we all lose. Man, this whole thing, it's just disheartening. What happened to fairness, you know? What happened to just doing things the right way? It's a wake-up call, though. Yeah. Passantino's story, got to be vigilant, defend our rights, hold those in power accountable. Feels like we're in this, this place now where power, just raw power, it wins. Doesn't matter what's right, what's fair. That's what sticks with you, right? This whole thing, it's like, if the folks at the top top here are willing to play dirty, target people, shut them up. Yeah. What hope does anyone else have? Passantino, he actually says something about that. He's like, I'm not the real victim. Mm. He says there are people in jail right now yeah. who basically just walked around near the Capitol. Highlighting that double standard, yeah. He had resources, connections, could fight back. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those folks, they couldn't. And it makes you wonder, how much of this is going on that we don't hear about? They went after Passantino, a White House lawyer. What are they doing to regular folks who can't fight back? That's the question, isn't it? This whole Passantino story, it's a wake-up call. Got to be paying attention what's going on in our government, the courts, the media. We can't just assume someone else will fix it. So what do we, we do? I mean, it feels kind of hopeless, right? The very systems that are supposed to protect us, they're the ones being turned against us. Awareness is the first step. Talk about it with friends, family, whoever. Share this interview. Don't let it get buried. Passantino, he talks about lawyers, their role in all this. He says a healthy society needs lawyers who will represent anyone, no matter their politics. Otherwise, the whole system gets lopsided. Couldn't agree more. Core of our legal system, everyone gets a fair shot, a good lawyer. If lawyers are cherry-picking clients out of fear, that's bad news for everyone. It's like we're losing the ability to even have a fair fight anymore. And then there's the evidence thing. You can't get over that. That the January 6th committee might have destroyed those tapes. That I don't even have words. If they were truly after the truth, why do that? It makes it seem like protecting themselves, their story, was more important than the facts. Dangerous, man. Really dangerous. If they can get away with that, what's stopping them from doing it again with something else? Erodes trust, plain and simple. And if we can't trust these institutions, how can we hold them accountable? This whole interview. Yeah. Man, it's been rough. Just leaves you with this bad feeling, you know, like something's really broken. It's a reminder, though, how fragile things are. Our democracy, it's not a given. We got to fight for it every day. Defend our rights. Hold those in power accountable. Pesentino's story, it's like a warning. What happens when they decide to twist the rules for their own gain? A call to action for all of us. We can't just sit around hoping for the best from our government, from each other. Fight for a better world, a fairer world. Yeah. Tough stuff, but important stuff. Thanks for listening, everybody.